welcome to the lecture cast on dysbiosis in this lecture we are going to see about the microbiome and their interactions dysbiosis definition types of dysbiosis origin of dysbiosis the immune control in microbial homeostasis impact of dysbiosis on host immune system dysbiosis in various systemic diseases and oral diseases dysbiosis as a diagnostic tool targeting dysbiosis for therapy and future directions and finally conclusion microbiome microbiome is a characteristic microbial community occupying a reasonably well defined habitat with distinct physiochemical properties those microorganisms that colonize the human body are called human microbiome there are about 10 to 100 trillion microbial cells associated with human body these include collective of genomes from virus bacteria archaea fungal and protozoal species the composition of these microorganisms are different from person to person and they are site specific these occupy the skin mucous membrane and intestinal tract of human body which are harbored in various nicks the term microbiota and microbiome is being used interchangeably while the microbiota represents the type of microorganisms present in a specific environment microbiome includes the microorganisms along with their genomes inside a particular ecological niche Each microbial flora has the characteristic set of microorganisms the diverse microorganisms form a complex ecosystem that thrive in an ever changing environment they interact with each other and the human host in a symbiotic or a mutually beneficial relationship this harmonious state is called eubiosis the healthy microbial community is characterized by diversity that is more than 1000 different species coexist in the microbial flora the stability to withstand the forces against the removal a resistance against the pathological microorganisms colonization and the resilience when they are subjected to perturbations or change they strive to gain back the equilibrium or the normal composition The mucosal microbiome interface is always a balance between the defense mechanisms of the immune cells and the symbiotic microbial factors such as microbial antigens and metabolites. The study of metabolomics aims to identify and quantify all the small molecules and micro produced metabolites which tells us the dynamic nature of the metabolic functions of a particular microbial community and helps us understand how it influences the human host. The microbial composition at a particular flora is being determined by the interspecies interaction and the host microbial interaction which impacts the health and the disease status of the host the diverse microorganisms they co-aggregate into structured communities which are embedded or enclosed into a polymeric extracellular matrix forming a biofilm the molecules present in the biofilm they inherit the group behavior called the quorum sensing there are three different types of interaction happening in between the microorganisms of different species genera and family they include the positive interactions negative interactions and neutral interactions the positive interactions are mutualism synergism and commensalism Mutualism is an interaction happening between two or more species where both the species are benefited whereas a commensalism a long term interaction where one of the species is benefited from the other whereas the other is neither benefited nor harmed from the interaction in the neutral interaction there is no effect seen due to the interaction The negative interaction include predation, parasitism, amensalism and competition. This is a asymmetric interaction where one of the species they predominate and leave the other weaker or smaller species bereft of the nutrition or resource. They can even get rid of the other species with the help of chemical secretion. 
we can see in the picture the positive interactions cause the cooperation in between the microorganisms leading to a harmonious relationship whereas a negative interaction leads to a competitive behavior causing the survival of only a single species and less of diversity a holistic concept called holobiont has evolved which treats the host and the microbiome as a single unit the disease state of the holobiont includes dysbiosis along with a low diversity and variability of the associated microbiota whereas the health state include the eubiosis with high diversity of the microorganisms perturbations or the changes that disturb the equilibrium of the ecosystem can cause the outgrowth of species with pathological potential this deranged state is called dysbiosis dysbiosis is defined as the compositional and functional alteration in the microbiota driven by a set of environmental and host related factors that perturb the microbial ecosystem to an extent that exceeds its resilience and resistance capabilities it is the change you see in the components of resident my commensal communities to, in relation to what you see that in a normal healthy flora moving on to the categories of dysbiosis the first category is the bloom or expansion of pathobionts pathobionts are the commensal microbiota that have the potential to cause pathology usually these organisms are less abundant in the microflora but they proliferate when there is abrasion occurring in the intestinal ecosystem as in case of an infection or an inflammation these also increase with the genetic defects in the immune function for example if there is a polymorphism in toll like receptor which senses the bacterial organisms present in the mucosa there is an outgrowth of pathological proteolytic bacteria such as enterobacteriaceae which leads to colitis as you see in inflammatory bowel diseases the second category include the loss of beneficial microorganisms the reduction or complete loss of common cells can be the consequence of microbial killing or diminished bacterial proliferation these common cells are not passive bystanders they are they are actively involved in the in functions of the host starting from the vitamin synthesis metabolism the maintenance of the circadian rhythms these have a n number of roles the uh, important among them is the development and maturation of the immune homeostasis for example you have the bacteroid flagellus species and uh, the clostridial species which are important in development and maturation of t regulatory cells which prevents the development of inappropriate inflammatory reactions against the body's own antigens and their own commensal bacteria the organisms such as lactobacillus acidophil have the direct anti inflammatory action by neutralizing the inflammatory cytokines the absence of these common cells can lead to the alteration or the loss of balance in the protection against the pathogen and tolerance to commensal organism and self antigen the third category of dysbiosis is the loss of diversity usually the microorganisms exist as a polymicrobial community the reduction in the microbial diversity is a recurrent characteristic of disease associated dysbiosis it is evident in various diet associated dysbiosis also along with the various autoimmune disorders like type 1 diabetes the microbial diversity it provides the overlapping protection by the multiple organisms in prevention of non communicable diseases for example you have 30 different species of clostridium which is more effective in stimulating t regulatory cells than a single species of clostridia Moving on to the origin of dysbiosis there are various causative factors implicated in dysbiosis they are infection inflammation diet xenobiotics genetics familial transmission antibiotic treatment immune defects metabolic alterations stress 
pregnancy and physical injury infection and inflammation is a very important causative factor for dysbiosis infection with inflammation can compromise the microbiota's ability to provide colonial resistance as a consequence pathological microorganisms like enterobacteria ca they establish themselves but through the use of nutrients which are released from the dead and dying epithelial cells you have the various production and release of chelating agents such as sidrophores which attract the iron ions which is necessary for their own colonization they compete with the other microbial species they release the bacteriocin which is responsible for getting rid of phylogenetically related organisms they use the horizontal gene transfer to acquire various virulence factors which is necessary to thrive in a inflamed gut they exploit and neutralize the antimicrobial peptides produced by the host diet has a major impact on dysbiosis it has a short term and a long term influence on the composition of intestinal microbiota the evidence show that a western diet or more implicated with the altered microbiota and disease expression while the mediterranean diet has a prolonged a longer life expectancy and less heart and metabolic diseases the microbiota when they act on dietary fibers and the protein they release certain metabolic ways such as the short chain fatty acids these along with the secondary bile acids and the structural components they trigger the various hormones which help in the metabolism of glucose insulin sensitivity fat storage feeding and satiety feeling when there is a derangement of these metabolism the and the altered dietary functions you have the deranged or a different dysbiotic microbial community occupying the flora low fiber and high fat diet progressively reduce the microbial diversity the diet high in saturated fat produce more of torocolic acid which preferentially help in the growth of organisms such as uh, bilophilia wurzworthia which is a pathobiont that favors th1 type of inflammatory reaction leading to colitis and colorectal cancer dietary emulsifiers and dietary sweeteners also induce dysbiosis broad spectrum antibiotics causes a change in the composition and function of the intestinal microbiota they cause depletion of short chain fatty acids which also induce the long lasting effect on the host the early colonization of the human microbiome happens as soon as the, as soon as a child is being born the neonatal microbiome is determined by the maternal microbiota the mode of delivery and the feed the child is taking also influence the microbiota the evidence show that those baby who are born through the vaginal delivery they have good bolus of microbiota whereas it has been inhibited or the disturbed by the cesarean section where those babies who are born of vaginal delivery have a good bolus of microbiota which has been interrupted by the cesarean section those babies fed with the breast milk have far high diversity of the microbial flora compared to those who are formula fed the environmental transmission has an additional importance as household feature characteristic microbial signatures both familial and the environmental microbiome transmission can be of phenotypic importance in some disorders the, the transmissible component is being introduced into a, a non communicable disease through the environmental microbiome transmission genetics the microorganisms that colonize the host body is inherited the host genetics are involved in shaping the composition of the intestinal microbiota the genome wide association studies have linked many loci with the microbial taxa and the functional pathways the loci related to the human vitamin d receptor and various other immune and metabolic functions are highlighted 
as the potential drivers of microbial control through host genetics. The genetic influence on the microbial composition may be involved in the manifestation of certain phenotypes. Have you all wondered why certain people take a less of a food but they are obese? While certain other people who take a lot of food but they don't put on weight, the type of microbiota they have inherited could be a cause. For example, those inherited with Cristinalacea family, they are associated with low body mass index. The immune control of microbial homeostasis. The host shapes the configuration of normal and dysbiotic microbiome by means of immune system. In turn, the gut microbial composition affects the local and systemic immunity. Genetic defects in the recognition and response pathways to identify the various microbes can alter the microbial colonization or misrecognize the normal microbiota, leading to disease. The defect in pattern recognition receptors can lead to increased mucosal associated bacteria, leading to colorectal cancer and prolonged inflammatory conditions. Mutations in the gene involved in immune regulatory mechanisms or pro-inflammatory pathways cause unrestrained inflammation. The cytokine polymorphisms select and favor the growth of specific component in the biofilm. The panet cells express antimicrobial peptides alpha defensin, which is an essential regulator of intestinal ecology. When there is a reduction in interleukin-22, these antimicrobial peptides are produced less, leading to expansion of segmented filamentous bacterial population and systemic colonization with pathogenic commensals. The commensal on their own, they help, they produce metabolites which stimulate the NLRP6 associated inflammasome, which secrete the mucus and other antimicrobial peptides which regulate in the microbial composition. When these common cells are being destroyed or disturbed, you have the altered uh, immune response in the, in the mucosa. The various adaptive immune responses which helps in the regulation of microbial composition are secretory IgA which are seen floating in the mucosal surface. These are specific to the bacteria and their functions such as flagella production. In the absence of these secretory IgA, there is, ser uh, there is increase in the serum lipopolysaccharide which are specific to gram-negative bacteria. There is an expansion of segmented filamentous bacteria and anaerobic colonization. The T follicular helper cells express the inhibitory receptor PD-1, which is the programmed cell death protein 1. The deficiency of these cells can lead to the altered microbial composition. The less of good bacteria such as bifidobacterium, more of proteolytic bacteria such as the Enterobacteriaceae. Invariant natural killer T cells respond to a wide range of glycolipids. Absence of these cells can again alter the microbial composition. Other mechanisms which help in the processing and presentation of the various microbiota across the mucosa to the immune system which includes MHC molecule class 1 and the intraepithelial lymphocytes. Any defect or polymorphism in these proteins and cells can cause altered microbial composition across the mucosa. How does a dysbiosis impact the host immune system? The dysbiotic microbial community, once established, substantially affect both the local mucosal and systemic landscape of immune cells, which is important for their own survival and also the maintenance of the dysbiotic state. The microbiota uses various signals and mechanisms to affect the immune activation, including the epigenetic remodeling and altered gene expression. The microbiota can influence the host innate immune system via two types of signals, their own microbial cell components and the metabolites, which inhibit the antimicrobial response and they maintain the inflammatory state through their crosstalk. 
example the p chitabalus they promote the degradation of myd88 protein which is an adapter protein associated with toll like receptor when these proteins are being degraded there is no there is absence of bacterial sensing which can lead to the colonization of pathological microorganisms the sutarella species they degrade iga and associated stabilizing peptide when there is absence of these uh, antibodies on the surface that can neutralize various pathological microorganisms the definitely the dysbiotic state is being prolonged the interaction between toll like receptor 2 and the complement receptor c5ar can lead to altered phagocytic and microbial killing the aberrant interactions of the microorganisms with the host immune system in a genetically predisposed individual can lead to a plethora of the immune mediated diseases and cancer the causal contribution is being demonstrated by the prospective cohorts interventional trials almost 109 trials have been registered and the various preclinical studies in the experimental animals and the human models example p gingivalis have been causally associated with rheumatoid arthritis the epstein barr virus associated with systemic lupus erythematosus and systemic sclerosis moving on to the dysbiosis in various systemic diseases first we will see it in inflammatory bowel disease inflammatory bowel disease has chronic relapsing inflammation of intestinal mucosa and extra intestinal organs this biosis in ibd involves a decrease in the frequency of butyrate producing bacteria with increase in the sulfate reducing bacteria the butyrate is an important energy source for the epithelial cells to to protect the epithelial barrier against the uh, entry of the pathogen so when, when the butyrate is being produced less epithelial permeability is more which can lead to the increased translocation of bacteria with pathological potential there is the sulfate reducing bacteria which converts the sulfate into hydrogen sulfide which is a toxic molecule which reduces the phagocytosis and killing of pathological organisms in the ibd you have decreased firmicutes and bacteroids ratio which is involved in the in the conjugation of bile acids this destroys the bile acid mediated reduction in the intestinal inflammation leading to an increase in colitis celiac disease this is the autoimmune disease triggered by the ingestion of dietary gluten there is a permanent intolerance to dietary gluten such as gliadin peptide and prolamins in genetically predisposed individuals the proportion of gluten proteolytic bacteria is decreased in these individuals there is abundance of gram negative proteobacteria these undigested gluten they are being transported through the lumen inside the lamina propria with the help of a protein called transglutaminase 2 dendritic cells in the lamina propria they sense these gluten they activate or stimulate the adaptive immune response in the mucosa uh, inducing the th1 and th17 mediated production of pro inflammatory cytokines uh the the levels of short chain fatty acids it also is reduced in these individuals because of which there is uh, the t regulatory cells are disturbed overall there is a increased inflammatory conditions the prolonged inflammatory condition can lead to the destruction of uh, epithelial cells and, and contribute to the chronicity of the disease Obesity is a metabolic disorder that is on rise worldwide. These individuals they have less of the butyrate producing bacteria which is important in the breakdown and fermentation of dietary polysaccharides. There is decreased absorption of monosaccharides in these individuals and uh, consequently when there is a fermentation is disturbed there is less of production of metabolic product which is the short chain fatty acids. uh these when these short chain fatty acids are reduced these 
actually they act through the fatty acid receptor and stimulate certain hormones they stimulate the satiety feeling in the brain uh, when these are at loss you have decreased satiety the short chain fatty acids also lead to the increased oxidation of fatty acids in the adipose tissue thus they won't let the fat, the fat get accumulated in the adipose tissue the obese microbiota can cause increased bacterial antigen translocation uh, leading to chronic inflammation and impo- impaired metabolic f- functions such as the insulin resistance the diabetes is a uh, a very common rising chronic disorder there are two types of diabetes you can type 1 which is an autoimmune disorder where you have a less of uh, insulin production type 2 type 2 is caused by more of uh, the insulin resistance the dysbiosis is seen in both of these types uh, you have decreased uh, mucin degrading bacteria such as bifidobacterium lactobacillus and privotella and you have rise on pathobionts like such as bacteroids clostridia fusobacterium blotia rhinococcus everything so these bacteria they cause altered epithelial permeability which when there is an altered permeability the various antigens they traverse through the lumen you have pro inflammatory response which has been elicited as a result you have you have the development of auto antibodies generated against the beta cells of pancreas um, with insulitis dysbiosis and asthma those those children in germ free conditions and those who are exposed to antibiotics in the early life are associated with increased susceptibility to allergy and asthma the microbiota through the b cell intrinsic uh, mvd88 signaling limits the conversion of serum antibodies to ige type and they also lessen the ba- basophil abundance when there is an absence of these microbiota the there is a preferential switch over to the ige class which supports the allergic inflammation those those experimental models where the mice has been treated with vancomycin which is an antibiotic there is a less of t regulatory cells which has been developed so these antibiotics basically they kill the microorganisms which lead which helps in the development and maintenance of t regulatory cells this biosis in autism the gut microbiota and its metabolites affect the cns functioning via the gut brain axis these microorganisms they produce the neurotoxins which did, which into the synthesis of neurotoxins by these microbiota can cross gut brain barrier and interfere with the normal neuro development in these children thus affecting the behavior and the brain chemistry in these kids the replenishment of diminished commensal bacteria has been proved effective for example in the experimental autistic models replenishment of lactobacillus ruteri and bacteriorides fragilis have reduced the dis- disease severity oncobiosis dysbiosis in cancer the microbial dysbiosis associated with neoplastic disease are termed oncobiosis the oncobiome is the various microorganisms that are characterized in various cancer the oncobiome are the microorganisms that are characterized in various cancers the oncobiome oncobiomes from sh- long and short term survivors are different in the various experimental animal tumor models the transfer of oncobiome from the long term survivor has induced prolonged survival in the organism the oncobiosis drives carcinogenesis metastasis and the poor survival which has been well characterized in cancers such as pancreatic ovarian breast and the oral cancers too the bacterial metabolites and the functional metabolisms have role in microbiome driven pathogenesis of the cancers 
dysbiosis in oral cavity you have various common oral lesions which are associated with dysbiosis the dental caries is a polymicrobial disease which is very very common this is characterized with the infection of specific bacteria present in the dental plaque such as the streptococcus mutans and lactobacillus in a susceptible host who take a lot of carbohydrates the streptococcus mutans they use these carbohydrates and ferment them into acids preferentially lactic acid which causes the demineralization of the teeth the mineral loss initially causes the enamel porosity and the softening of the subsurface so this increases the diffusion of the acids finally the microorganisms invade the dentin and the pulp and this can even further lead to the bacteremia the picture you can see the abiotic or oral biofilm where there is a polymicrobial community then they are subjected to acidic micro environment created by a uh, high sugar uh, fermentation the cofactors such as reduced salivary flow can also contribute to the environment there is the development of dysbiotic oral film which is rich in organisms such as streptococcus mutans lactobacillus acidophilus and the actinomycosis viscosis so these dysbiotic oral film can lead to the progression of the dental caries finally affecting the pulp and creating the bacteremia another lesion commonly encountered in the dental uh, setup is the periodontal disease which is resulting which results in the imbalance in the microflora which is promoted by ecological stress which is enriched with the periopathogens under normal conditions the levels of periopathogens they are not able to outcompete the predominant eubiotic sac- sacrolytic bacteria when there is external factors such as plaque calculus which change the bacterial load in induces the host inflammatory response when there is a lot of flow of a, a gingival cavicular fluid which is an exudate sub gingival nutritional status is being changed which causes the proteolytic gram negative bacteria to proliferate more since these feed in the anaerobic environment these feed in the more of pro- proteins uh, which is released in the inflammatory environment uh, these have the preferential growth which include the privetella intermedia fusibacterium nucleatum porphyrinomonas gingivalis tanerella forthsythia and trypanoma denticola these organisms are pathogenic and they can destroy the periodontal ligament causing the host tissue degradation the keystone pathogen theory focuses on a single pathogen which is important in creating the whole of the dysbiosis uh, so the p gingivalis has be, has been portrayed as the keystone pathogen which has developed strategies to subvert and impair the host immune response along with changing the entire uh, oral biome into a dysbiosis dysbiosis in oral cancer is well associated recently you have species such as privotella fusobacterium and porphyrimonas these can trigger the pro inflammatory micro environment wherein the inflammatory cytokines and the matrix metalloproteinases are being induced to pro- be produced which favors the development and progression of the tumor you have various oncogenic metabolites which is being produced by species such as bifidobacterium lactobacillus and streptococcus the reactive oxygen species and or a reactive nitrogen species which is being produced along with nitrosamines can induce the genetic defects causing mutations responsible for induction and progression of cancer the various other mechanisms include alteration of the epithelial barrier by these organisms which can cause the occurrence of precancerous lesions not only that they induce various oncoepigenetic alterations such as the 
increase in the onco microRNA DNA methylation and and protein phosphorylation main it is surprising that many of the systemic diseases are evidenced with oral dysbiotic organisms how is it so the dysbiotic oral bacteria associated with dental diseases have access to blood stream for example you, the pulpitis after the extraction or uh, through the periodontal di- the dysbiotic oral bacteria has been asso- the dysbiotic oral bacteria associated with various dental diseases such as pulpitis or the periodontitis they gain access to the blood stream causing bacteremia the bacteria in the circulatory system lead to the colonization of other host tissue thus they associate with various systemic diseases the common examples are atherosclerosis alzheimer's disease type 2 diabetes and the, the pregnancy complications the patients with periodontitis have 25 percentage of higher risk of atherosclerotic plaque formation the uh, five different types of oral pathogens are unique to atherosclerotic plaque these organisms they gain the entry to the plaque with the help of bacteremia they invade the arterial wall and they promote plaque formation there they release various specific bacterial toxins with pro arthrogenic effects apart from atherosclerosis you have the trypanosoma species which is more commonly associated in alzheimer's disease and you have the various periodontal pathogens commonly seen in diabetic people and you have you have various uh, periodontal pathogen which are associated with diabetes how are dysbiosis been used in diagnosis information regarding the state and function of the microbiota utilized for diagnosis and therapy of various human immune mediated diseases the analytical tools include dna sequencing which identifies the strains and genomes there's rna sequencing which determines the type of microbial gene activity the metabolome meta transcriptome and meta genome analysis helps in the finding the microbial community function these tools are being already tried as a potential tool in parkinson's disease alzheimer's next we will move on to therapies that use this biosis as the target you have various antimicrobial peptides metallic nanoparticles prebiotics probiotics symbiotics and host response modulators the antibiotic usage eliminates both the pathogenic as well as the commensal bacteria thus studies had more focused on antimicrobial peptides which has a broad spectrum antimicrobial activity that could modulate the dysbiosis ba- bacteriocin like nisin are found to be active against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria these antimicrobial peptides they work by inserting themselves to the surface layer of the bacteria they cause pore and release of intracellular components finally causing the lysis of the bacteria the various metallic nanoparticles are being incorporated into poly- polymeric matrix as a filler particle to control the biofilm growth these metallic nanoparticles they insert they get inside the cell membrane they cause the damage by inhibition of electron transport chain once they gain access to the cell they form reactive oxygen species which cause the oxidative stress ulti- uh, leading to dna damage and death these can also destabilize ribosomes and mitochondrial functions leading to death the fecal microbiota transplantation has been used in the treatment of various chronic disorders where the entire intestinal community of the patient is being replaced by a microbiota of a healthy donor intense effort have been made to engineer or reconstitute the microbiota to prevent or treat diseases the probiotics which are nothing but the healthy microorganisms such as the lactobacilli and bifidobacterium 
species which are being administered to cause expansion of the healthy microbiota they act through various mechanisms they compete for the resources and nutrition and also they block the various adhesion sites of the pathological microorganism they directly they cause the stimulation of immune system against the bacteria and against the pathogens they cause the stimulation of the immune system against the pathogens or they directly produce the antimicrobial ad- agent such as bactericin to get rid of the pathogens the prebiotics are the dietary natural or synthetic food which aims to modify the composition of intestinal ecosystem through nutritional changes the nitrate and arginine are they cause the rapid changes in the structure and the function of polymicrobial community they induce the restoration of the microbiome certain certain agents such as the n acetyl d manosamine they lead to the selective growth of commensals future directions what are we up to the concept of dysbiosis deserves a functional rather than a taxonomical interpretation means we are more bothered about what the metabolites produced by the microorganisms rather than the composition even those microorganisms which are present in a small quantity can have a very big effect the microbial functionalities and metabolite microbial functionalities and metabolite profiles associated with particular condition are more consistent with and they have a higher causal relevance the extent and the manifestation of dysbiosis is highly context dependent factors such as the host genotype environmental microbial repertoire are should be considered for susceptibility to dysbiosis development understanding of the precise dysbiotic microbiota derived or the microbiota modulated molecules that mediate the disease development can allow us to design a metabolite based in- interventions to conclude the primary goal of human microbiome project which was initiated in 2007 with around 10 projects was to establish the normality of the intestinal composition and function now the years have rolled out the subsequent efforts are being aimed to define and understand the dysbiotic states associated with human diseases the new associations have brought about promising implications for further diagnostic and therapeutic approaches these are the references thank you